Welcome to step two, educate end users and IT staff. We start with the question, is it more likely that a confidential file will be compromised by hackers from the outside of the company or that an end user will accidentally erase it? Answering this question will give you an idea as to why end user education is so important. I'll give you a hint it's more likely the, the end user will accidentally erase it. So, we educate all staff on how to most safely conduct themselves to reduce actions that could result in security breaches. No matter how good the technology used to secure the network, actions on the part of both end users and IT staff can result in security breaches. The way to reduce these problems is to educate all staff on how to most safely conduct themselves. Specifically, they should be educated on the acceptable use policy, the security policy itself, and any procedures applicable to their specific job. It's a fact that end users will usually perform their jobs in the easiest way possible, not the most secure. End users are simply not aware that certain of their actions may pose security threats to the organization. Education aims to reduce these security actions. Now we have to understand, of course, that end users most of the time are not thinking about security at all. So education is aimed to get them to think about it. New employees should be required to complete basic security education prior to starting employment. They are most compliant at this time. After completing the initial security training, all employees should be required to complete some sort of refresher security, uh, security training on a regular basis, say once or twice a year. Finally, security policies and procedures should be readily available for all employees to be able to refer to at any time. This allows them to easily clarify questions that may arise during their day-to-day -day routine. That is the end of this video. We'll see you in step three.